A pulley system is used to keep a heavy object at rest as shown in the diagram below. Okay, um, first question, define the term resultant vector. Well, let me explain to you what resultant vector is. Let's say you have a certain object and there is a force of seven newtons to the right and there is a force of three newtons to the right, or <laughs> to the left. Now, what would the result of all of that be? Like, what is the summary? What is the conclusion that we can say? Well, if you have seven to the right and three to the left, well, then the result is just going to be four newtons to the right. Can we agree that if you summarize that into one, that's going gonna, that's gonna to be that over there? So these are called vectors, okay? And this one is the result. It's like the, the answer or the conclusion. So what is a resultant vector? A resultant vector is a single vector. It's a single vector having the same, whoa, what's going on? Effect as two or more, those ones over there, um, vectors acting together. So it's a single vector which has the same effect as two or more. So this one has the same effect as that, okay? Now, uh, so that's that question. Now this one says, draw a vector diagram showing the forces acting on the object. Label the forces and indicate the angles on your diagram. Okay, now what is a vector diagram? Now some learners confuse this with a free body diagram. So a free body diagram is when you just have a single dot and then you've got the arrows going off like that, for example. But a vector diagram is almost like head to tail, okay? Uh, you don't have to use like a compass and a protractor and all of that stuff, but it's just, it looks the same. So what we need to understand here is that, okay, I'll make it simple for you guys. Let's first, let's first do a free body diagram, okay? And then we'll do a vector diagram over here. So you can see the difference. Kevin, you're so sweet. I oh, know. Okay. Um, okay. So free body diagram. So um, we got to just look at the different forces here. So there is a heavy object that is going to pull down. So we can say that there's a heavy object pulling down. Now this rope. Okay. Um, all you do is you just take that part away. Like what is this? What is this rope doing to this object? Well, it's pulling the object that way. Don't worry about this part that's going down. We can ignore that. So we can just say that there is a force going that way, which is 1,440 newtons. And then there's this one over here, which is just going at its own angle, uh, which is 1,284.95. Jeez, they were so precise in this one. 0.85.95. Okay, so that is a free body diagram, but that's not what they're asking us to do. So we need to now take this and just turn it into like a closed loop, like a triangle. Okay, so this, this, this section, by the way, is equilibrium, a uh, triangle of forces, equilibrium, triangle of forces. Um, so start with one of these, anyone you like. Um, I know, mo uh, okay, I'm going to make an assumption. Um, so, so, so let's say we chose the one going down. Okay, so we choose the one going down. There we go. Now, okay, so we've done this one. Now you just take the next one, okay? So you just put it onto the end. So you just attach it to the end. Look at that, you see what I did? I just I just took this one and I just attached it to the end of this one. Now I just take this one and I just attach it to the end of that one. Oh, look at that, I made a triangle. But let's make it a little bit bigger. And there we go. So now you just go label everything correctly. So um, which one's this? This one's 1,284.95 newtons. Do not get those numbers wrong. Guys, I'm just joking. I don't know why they were so precise with their numbers. Um, and then 1,440 newtons. And then this is just the heavy object, which you would have to label. So over here, I should have labeled this as W, or you can label it as FG. I usually use FG, but you can also use W. Okay, now we need to get some angles. Now, where students make a lot of mistakes is they just take these angles here and they just try to put them on the diagram. Be careful. You got to look at it like this. This angle here is this force relative to the x-axis. Can you see that? This is an x-axis and that's 55 degrees. So here's this, here's this one over here again, okay? So you're not going to put a 55 over there because that 55 would then be over this. 
but it's relative to the x-axis, so that would have been 55, okay? So I'm going to leave that one out for now because that's not a nice angle to put in our diagram. Let's see if we can use this one. So this one is 40 degrees, but that is 40 degrees for this force relative to a y-axis. So let's go find that one, okay? Um, oh, and here's the y-axis because it's going vertically down. So we can then put that angle as 40 degrees. That one works nicely, okay? Now, Kevin, what are we supposed to do, bro? Because you said I must leave the 55. Yeah, so let me try to show you what we can do here. What we can do is we can work out this angle because we know that this is straight up and this is like this. So this angle here would be 35, okay? Now that is a 35 degree for this force, which is this one, relative to the y-axis, okay? So that means we can now look at this line of air and we can find this angle over here why? Because that is relative to a um, the y-axis, which is a vertical line. So we can put this as 35. Okay, now we can use sum of angles in a triangle, and we can go work out this angle over here, and that would be 105 degrees. Okay, now you wouldn't have to show this one um, in the final answer. They just said, show, uh, label the forces and indicate the, the angles on your diagram. So that would have been the 35 and the 40 degree and then the 105 degrees. We just added that, probably for the next question. So here we go, calculate the weight. Now listen to that carefully. It said calculate the weight. It didn't say calculate the mass, okay? Okay, so what that pretty much means, the weight of this object... Well, in our triangle, um, oh, why is this not erasing? Come on, no, oh, it's acting weird. So we need to calculate that. That is what we need to calculate. Now, if you've watched my videos before with these vector type of triangles, um, what we can do, because this, remember, this is not a 90 degree triangle. Can you see that? It's not a 90 degree triangle. So that means that you can't use grade 10 trigonometry. Instead, you have to use grade 11 um, trigonometry, specifically the sin rule, which is the one that goes A over sin A equals to B over sin B. So for example, uh, th there's so many options you could choose here. You could say, um, and remember that the A and the A, they must be opposite of each other. So for example, you could choose this 1440 then that would go opposite the 40 degrees. So the way that you would fill that in would be 1440 over sin 40 equals, and then you would have to choose FG because that's what we are trying to look for, or you might even call that W, and then you need to go opposite that one's angle, which would be 105. So you'd say sin of 105. At this point, you just want to um, get FG by itself. So you could use cross multiplication here Okay, so that would, you would take this sin 105 over to there, and then you would take this part over to there. You don't have to do that last part that I just showed you. It depends on your level of understanding or how you are comfortable with doing this, but a lot of learners like to use cross multiplication, so you could go multiplied by sin 105 equals to sin 40 multiplied by fg. Now, to get FG alone, you would divide by sin 40, so you'd end up with FG is equal to 1440 multiplied by sin 105 over sin 40. And so if you had to work out FG, you would end up with 2163.91 newtons. If they then asked you for the mass, you would then just divide by 9.8 to convert it from the weight to the mass.